Hey, Walter Sorrels back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, a die for your press or power hammer to help you make round stock. So if you've been watching my videos recently, you'll notice I've been demonstrating the making of a bunch of forge related tools. So more of the same here today. In this case, I'm making a die for my hydraulic forge press. The purpose of this tool is to help you forge cylindrical rod of a specific dimension. Tons of reasons for doing this. Uh, maybe you've forged a pair of tongs from thick stock and you want to reduce the reins a little bit and make them into a nice smooth round handle. Or maybe you forged something square like a Damascus billet and now you want to turn it into round stock for a pommel, a handle, something like that. This tool will help you do that. Something similar can be made for both presses and power hammers, even for screw presses, uh, treadle hammers, anything like that. My particular press uses dies that mount on one by four by three eighths inch bases, like this flatting die set that came with the machine. So to start with, I'll go ahead and chop the bases to the correct length from this big piece of stock. First, I'll descale the faces and make sure they mate together. I'll be using mild steel, technically A36 hot roll, for the die bodies. Now if we were going to be using this in really heavy, frequent applications, I would definitely use high speed steel, M4, but since this will just be used occasionally at best, I'm good with using mild steel. I'll be drilling out four holes, quarter inch, three eighths, half, and three quarter inch in each of these dimensions with this one tool. Now you can do whatever dimensions work for you. I'll set out some drills to kind of gauge the locations and then mark them so that I get a thicker web between the bigger holes and so there's more material to resist deformation where there's going to be greater pressure. Obviously more pressure is going to be exerted on the larger holes. Now I'll put them in my mill and drill four holes. Look, you don't need a mill. A drill press is all that's required if you want to do this yourself, but you can do it more accurately this way. The main point here is that I want the holes to be symmetrical. In other words, I want them exactly down the middle between these two blocks. I'll begin using a stub length spotting drill to locate the holes. I'm actually drilling all the way to full diameter for the hole. The reason I do this rather than just drilling a dimple to locate them is that in the next step, I'll switch to a screw length drill and punch a quarter inch hole all the way through. So by drilling through to the full diameter of the hole, it's gonna line up perfectly. So I've used an edge finder and my digital readout to get really dead on right in the middle. But if you're off by a tiny amount, it won't matter. You can do all of this by eye if you need to. Once I've located the hole locations, I'll mark exactly where they are so that I can repeat the sequence of holes and not screw up. I'm writing them on the metal so you can see, but in real life I'm also writing them somewhere that can't get dissolved later on when I get all kinds of fluids on here. If you do this on a drill press, you'll just need to drill the sequence of holes on each hole locking down your drill vise on the table, and changing drills a gazillion times. But by using my DRO, I can skip that. Now the quarter inch hole's done. So I'll return to each hole in sequence and complete the hole with a drill for the final diameter. The reason I've drilled the quarter inch hole all the way through is that, especially with the fat diameter holes, you're putting a ton of drilling pressure on the tip of the drill and they're just happier if they can do all the work with the outer sections of the drill. This is just a good general principle anytime you're drilling fairly large holes. You don't have to do it this way, but your drill bits will thank you. Now the key point in all this fussing around that I'm doing is that you want the holes to be nice and even from one side of the die to the other. If you just throw a drill in there and blast away, your drill will inevitably wander a little bit in turn, causing a hole that doesn't run true. That, then, can potentially at least cause weird tapers or other problems to appear in these little die cavities that you're drilling.
And here's the final result. Now I'll put a chamfer on each of the edges of these cavities. If you don't, you'll bite into your stock and the die won't work out very well. In fact, after I tested these out, I made the chamfer even a little bigger than I originally did. After that, I'll measure everything as carefully as possible and weld up the top die. These dies are a lot finickier than most forged dies, so I want to make sure they're going to line up dead perfectly. If they're off, especially side to side, you'll never be able to make anything round with them, and since that's the whole goal of these things, you need to get it right. I'll also weld on a little flange that goes on the front to keep the dies seated correctly. So to get everything exactly right, I'll put the top die in after it's welded. Then slowly lower it onto the bottom die. Now normally I don't care which is top and which is bottom, but in this case, for all the reasons I just explained, I want everything as repeatable as possible. So, I'll get everything perfect, inserting a piece of half inch stock to just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle everything into the absolute perfect location. After that, I'll use Gorilla Tape to keep it in position. Then, I'll take it back to the welding table, tack it, take it back to the press and give it a test run to make sure everything's right and only then will I finalize the welds. Now if these were just flatting dies or drawing dies or something, none of this would be critical and I'd never in a million years go to all this trouble. But for this, it does need to be right. I'll also clean them up on the belt grinder to get rid of some of the excess weld material and some of the weld spatter. And that's it. Let's test it out. A quick note here, these are not really reducing dies. The stock has to be pretty close to the intended size. You can't just jam a piece of 5 8 inch stock into a quarter inch cavity and pump out a quarter inch rod. Ain't gonna work. It's more of a cosmetic tool for sort of prettying up stock that's close to the right size, but not exactly the right shape that you want. Hopefully you can see how it's just kind of pinching this and and extruding little longitudinal pieces. Eventually you could kind of screw around and get this to work out right, but it's not an ideal way to do it. You'd do better to actually draw it out separately on a die that's intended for drawing and then just sort of pretty it up in these little rounding cavities. So on that subject, if you were making one that you knew was gonna get a lot of use, let's say you make a lot of tongs and you wanted to reduce the reins of those tongs from half inch stock down to 3 eighths of an inch, you might want to have a split die where on one side you would have a flatting die or maybe even a drawing die and then the other side you've just got that one channel that will be used for a particular dimension. That way you could draw on one side and then you could move it over to the rounding side and uh, you don't have to swap out dies when you're doing it. Or if you wanted to use these primarily as reducing dies then you could put sort of a conical section in the front and then basically feed your stock back into it so that it's slowly squashing it down to the final shape. All right, guys, I'll probably have a few more forge tools coming up soon. Then it's back to a regular diet of straight knife-related videos. See you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.